Hello, I'm Dr. Hans Doormalen. Welcome to Hans Doormalen presents Fun with Philosophy. Today our guest is the American pragmatist Charles Sanders Peirce. He is going to help us understand three types of reasoning, three types of inference. Induction, deduction and abduction. It's going to be a lot of fun. It was late in the evening and I was underage in this funky bar. I stepped outside to smoke. And there I saw this bag. I reached inside and took some of its contents. A handful of white beans. Ah, I thought, this is a bag full of white beans. Assuming that this was the case, I would predict that if I took some other beans out of this bag, they would all be white. I took another handful and indeed, they all turned out to be white. Then I spotted some white beans on the sidewalk near the bag. Without thinking, I picked them up and put them in the bag, for I was sure they came from this bag. Here we have three important types of inference. Induction, deduction and abduction. Let me explain. In induction, we go from the individual case or cases to all cases, to a general rule. When I took some beans out of the bag, I noticed these beans were in this bag. Let us call this the case. I also saw these beans are white. And let us call this the result. I inferred that not only were these beans in my hand white, but my conclusion was all the beans in the bag were white. This clearly is a rule. It pertains to all beans. Of course, I could not be sure. I might have taken the only beans from this bag that were actually white. So even if the conclusion is true, it is not logically entailed by the premises. This is not a valid inference. However, it looked like I discovered something about this tiny part of the world. We used induction to discover rules and regularities in the world. In this case, I discovered that all the beans in the bag are white. Then I used deduction. Suppose for a moment that I was the one that had filled the bag with only white beans. Then I could easily predict that the next handful of beans I took from this bag were white. This is deduction. Here we go from a general rule to the individual case or cases. We start with the rule and predict what will be the result in the next case. Rule, all the beans in the bag were white. I knew that, I put them all in. Case, these beans are from this bag. Still have my hands closed, my fist closed. I have beans in them. So what will I predict? The result, these beans are white. If the rule and the case describe facts, if these sentences are true, the prediction will be successful. It could not be otherwise. The sentence, these beans are white, will describe the facts the way the facts are. The sentences will be true. The sentence corresponds to the facts. This is what it means for an inference to be valid. The truth of the conclusion is entailed by the truth of its premises. The last inference I made was an abductive reasoning. I saw some beans lying on the floor and spotted that they were white, just like I knew the beans in the bag were. So I suppose for a moment again that I put the beans in the bag and I knew there's a bag of white beans over here. Now, here I concluded that the beans came from the bag. So I started with both the rule and the result. The rule again is all the beans from this bag are white, I knew that. Result, these beans here on the floor are white. I saw that. And my explanation was, well, these beans are from this bag. The conclusion now is an explanation. If the beans indeed came from this bag, then it would explain why there were white beans on the floor near a funky bar. But of course, other explanations are possible but maybe not very plausible. The beans might have fallen from someone's pocket. They might have been planted there by someone called Chaki, just to mess with people that step outside his bar. 
So this is an inference to the best explanation. Abduction, this also is not a valid way of reasoning. You reason, based on, for instance, plausibility, to the best of a lot of explanations, but you might reason to the best of a bad lot of explanations. That is, you might not have thought of the right explanation and will thus make the wrong inference. In our example, the beans might have come from outer space. That was not something I thought of. So we're not coming up with this true explanation, we're not thinking of this true explanation, I inferred a very plausible but still false explanation. So to summarize, with induction we discover, and we can't be sure about that, with deduction we predict, and we can be sure if we know that the rule is true, but if we don't know that the rule is true, and we're also not very sure, and with abduction we explain, and we can't be sure about that either. I hear the music seeping through, I'm going back into the funky bar. We can apply this. I don't know about you, but I love a good inference, and of course the master of inferences was Sherlock Holmes. So let's look at an inference in the very first story about Sherlock Holmes, a study in Scarlet, where Dr. Watson and Sherlock Holmes just meet. They are introduced to each other by uh, Mr. Uh, Stanford. So let's look at it. Dr. Watson, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, said Stanford, introducing us. How are you? He said cordially, gripping my hand with a strength for which I should hardly have given him credit. You've been in Afghanistan, I perceive. How on earth did you know that? I asked in astonishment. Indeed. How did Sherlock Holmes, who has never met Watson, knew that? That's quite surprising. He explains this a little later in the same story. He says he uses the science of deduction. Watson finds a paper on a table in, uh, uh, in Baker Street and uh, the writer, he doesn't know that it's Sherlock Holmes, says the following. From a drop of water, said the writer, a logician would infer the possibility of an Atlantic or a uh, Niagara without having seen or heard of one or the other. So all life is a great chain, the nature of which is known wherever we are shown a single link of it. Like all other arts, the science of deduction and analysis is one which, one can, which can only be acquired by a long and patient study nor is life long enough to allow any mortal to attain the highest possible perfection, perfection in it. Holmes says he uses deduction to infer that Watson has been in Afghanistan, uh, but Watson suspected he was told. You were told, no doubt. Nothing of the sort, says Sherlock Holmes. I knew you came from Afghanistan. From a long habit, the train of thoughts ran so swiftly through my mind that I arrived at a conclusion without being conscious of intermediate steps. There were such steps, such steps, however. The train of reasoning ran, here's a gentleman of a medical type but with the air of a military man, clearly an army doctor then. He has just come from the tropics, for his skin is dark, and that's not the natural tint of his skin, for his wrists are fair. He has undergone hardship and sickness, as his haggard face says clearly. His left arm has been injured. He holds it in a stiff and unnatural manner. Where in the tropics could an English army doctor, doctor have seen much hardship and got his arm wounded? Clearly in Afghanistan. The whole train of thought did not occupy a second. I then remarked that you came from Afghanistan and you were astonished. So apparently Holmes is good at deductive inferences at least according to the writer, so Arthur Conan Doyle he is, 
Let's see what Tony and Ronnie and a philosophical guest make from this in the next episode of the Tony and Ronnie Dark Philosophy Dark Show. This is Tony. This is Ronnie. This is Tony and Ronnie Talk Philosophy Talk Show. In a show. Well, well, welcome one and all to the Tony and Ronnie Talk Philosophy Talk Show. Today our guest is Umberto Eco, who besides being a philosopher, is also the author of the brilliant philosophical detective The Name of the Rose, in which William of Baskerville is a kind of medieval Sherlock Holmes. Thank you for joining us today. Buongiorno. Thank you for having me. Could you tell me a bit about the main character? Of course. Initially, I was thinking of making William of Ockham my main character, but for historical reasons, that was impossible. So I came up with this fictional character of William of Baskerville. But I presume that he still resembles William of Ockham, then? Oh, yes, he does. He thinks in the same way. Could you say a little bit more about that? What is so special about this thinking? Well, Ockham, of course, is famous for his epistemological principle that these days we call Ockham's razor. And what's that? It's an epistemological principle that says that one should not postulate entities in a theory that one does not need to explain something. Okay, that's rather abstract. Could you give an example, please? Sure. Suppose some girls use your phone to take pictures. And then later they show you a picture they took of a fairy. How are you going to explain that picture? One explanation, of course, is that they took a picture of a fairy. And another explanation is that they took a picture of a really good drawing of a fairy. Go on. Now suppose for a moment we believe that both explanations explain the phenomenon, that is the picture of a fairy, equally well. Which one then is the most parsimonious explanation? That is, which explanation postulates the least amount of entities in the world to explain the phenomenon? Uh, the one that says that it's a picture of a really good drawing? That's right. And why? The one that says that it is a picture of a really good drawing does not postulate fairies and thus postulates less entities in the world? Indeed, that's right. There is no need to postulate them to explain the phenomenon. That is what Occam's razor says. That is what a principle of parsimony says. So the girls would have pulled a prank on you. They would have lied that they actually took a picture of a real fairy. Everybody lies. Okay. So Professor Eco, your protagonist is partially based on William of Ockham which is clearly also based on Doyle's character Sherlock Holmes. So he probably thinks like Holmes as well, and this will be really good at deduction. Well, usually everyone is. Excuse me? But part of the reasons why the Sherlock Holmes stories are so much fun is that he always comes up with a deduction that I did not think of. He's like a superhero with the power of deduction. By that account, we are all superheroes, because deduction is something even little children can do. If I say to a group of children that they can all have a piece of chocolate pie, then no child will ask whether he or she gets a piece of chocolate pie as well. What you're saying then is that Sherlock Holmes does not use deduction to solve his mysteries. That is correct. Of course he uses deduction as well, but the type of reasoning he is famous for it's not deduction. But if he's not using deduction, then he must be using something else. No shit, Sherlock. Obviously, he uses abduction. He's trying to explain something, for example, how somebody was murdered and ended up wrapped in plastic. 
then evidently you need to have several possible explanations like that the person was shot, stabbed or strangled and then reason to the best and hopefully only one of those. That is abduction, not deduction. Well, Professor Aiko, thank you so much for your explanation. This certainly is something to think about. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you for having me on your show. Now, what do you make of that, Ronnie? Isn't that something? Indeed, what strikes me is that in almost every detective I have ever seen, where it is explained what a detective does, it is said that they use deduction or their deductive skills. I think that's true. That seems all to go back to the explanation of what Holmes was doing. This means that the great Sir Arthur Conan Doyle made a mistake in his expose and that most detective novelists and screenplay writers just use that without critically reflecting on it. It looks like that, with the exception of Echo, of course. Still, Holmes solved all his mysteries. Indeed, by using abduction. By using abduction. Holmes was a superhero with great powers of abduction. Yeah, he was. Too bad he wasn't real. Can we ever be sure of anything? Induction is an invalid way of reasoning and so is abduction. Deduction is a valid way of reasoning but starts with a general claim. And if the claim pertains to so many individuals, we cannot possibly have investigated them all, then we cannot be sure of the conclusion of deductive reasoning either, for the general claim might be false. We might have to accept that the skeptic is right. We cannot have knowledge, just opinions. Sapere aude. Wasn't that fun? Well, that was it for today's episode of Fun with Philosophy. Stay safe.